So uh, we have this painting and you can kind of see that the bridge is in. Everything's been laid in in terms of giving references and a wonderful underpainting for everything. When you do this, don't think so much about the objects that you're portraying here or that you're painting, but think more about the passages that this artist has put into the piece and what the architecture or the big word, the architectonics of the painting are. That's what's most important, is that you lay it out in a way that it has an underlying structure that helps the whole painting hold together. The more that you paint, in each of your applications, if you stay attuned to what you're doing, there's a richness that emerges. And although you're the creator and the one who applies it, you're not always the one who initially understands everything that's happening. I think that's kind of a a barrier to creativity, to always be having to understand everything that's going on. Another thing I like to do in landscapes is keep them connected, both vertically, you see me kind of working up here and then pulling some of this down into here. I started painting into here a little while ago, kind of gingerly with these marks, and maybe I'm going to also bring in some, now some bigger marks that are done in a different way. So then the type of brush strokes I'm using up here are going to weave down into this area and give me some continuity, actually give my viewer some continuity within the painting. And he's kind of got this light play coming in here. There's a big play of light uh, kind of subtle. So again, I'll use the Monet factor and now that I've put all this dark in in here, I'm going to come back in with some of the light and kind of dabby, precious dab and that's a good thing for you uh, as maybe a beginning painter or a painter who wants to focus on color relationships. The little dabs just keep changing the color but they also integrate it really nicely and you don't have to do so much blending. Now weaving red into green or pink, which is the tint of red, is just a great idea because it so pumps up the red because it is the complement of the green. So I have all this green in here. I have a lot of the split complement of the green, which is purple. And the other side of the split complement uh, for green would be orange. So these vertical and horizontal marks in many ways make up the painting more or less in terms of the heaviness, heavier marks to the bottom, lighter marks to the top, layering of color and so forth. Until next time, I'm Margaret Welty. Thanks for joining me on Art, Creativity and You.